We're joined in the studio by Emily Schrader. I'm sure you recognize from your own social media feeds, social media activist and a correspondent at YNET News. So thanks, Emily, for being with us. Um, you know, there's a couple, of, uh, just a bit of what Biden said that stuck out to me. His, you know, silence is complicity, uh, part of his statement. Um, I don't know who's pointing that at, you know, whether it's the celebrity world or the former President Trump. I don't know if it's part of his campaign. But, you know, on that note and on that concept of silence being complicity, you know, it feels like around some of these recent incidents there was a deafening silence in some corners. Is that a real issue? I mean, should we be expecting to hear more outcry or, you know, where do you, how do you see that issue? Well, I think that's definitely an issue. One of the problems that I have with President Biden's response, although I agree with his comments in principle, yeah. is that there's been silence based on political and partisan lines, yeah. especially in the United States. The left is silent when the right, or I'm sorry, when the left is yeah. anti-Semitic and the right is silent when the right is anti-Semitic. This is probably the biggest problem when it comes to speaking out against anti-Semitism. But I actually want to bring up another major issue that we're seeing on this issue, and that is that it's not enough to just speak about it. We've been speaking about it for years, and it's continued to escalate. In New York City, they have skyrocketing anti-Semitic attacks, physical anti-Semitic attacks, not just acts of vandalism. And yet, how many of them are being prosecuted? And even if they are being prosecuted, how many of them are actually being sentenced for these crimes? This lack of deterrence when it comes to actual real crimes that are being committed, not words on social media, not threats, but actual crimes is really where the deafening silence is, and it's what's contributing to future attacks as well. You know, how do you rank? I know you've had your eye on this issue for years now. Um, you know, at the, at the end of 2022 at this point, how do you rank, you know, where this threat stands? I mean, that's a hard concept to approach, but you know, how bad is it, essentially? I mean, I really think that we're at unprecedented levels wow. of anti-Semitism um, okay. that are a very uh, real threat to American Jewry in a way that I have never seen wow. as an American. Uh, and I'm very, very alarmed, not just at the acts of violence which are occurring, but at the response to them. As I mentioned, the lack of enforcement when it comes to these issues. And it's frustrating as an activist myself and many others and many organizations have been sounding the alarm about this for years, including the issue of anti-Zionism, which which manifests Con today in anti-Semitism, right. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We've seen that Jews are being attacked, physically endangered, hospitalized in the name of anti-Zionism. It's time that universally we accept that anti-Zionism is anti-Semitic and we deal with it adequately because as long as we continue to tiptoe around this issue, we're gonna see more anti-Semitism and that's been a huge missing link, sometimes on the right and sometimes on the left as well. Is there an uplifting side of the story? I mean, you know, we see the White House taking this on. Top officials in New York, for example, you know, at least they're speaking about it. I mean, you say this isn't going far enough at all, but is that, is that you know, an upside that it's being taken seriously, at least, uh, rhetorically, by authorities? I mean, where's... You know, it's not all doom and gloom, I'd like to argue, but... Uh, well, I mean, on the one hand, I'm happy that they're saying those things. On the other hand, I really do believe that it's coming from a place of partisan interest on both sides when they speak out against it, and this is just something that's really unacceptable. So I think that we need to applaud President Biden for speaking out this way, but we also need to call him and others in the Democratic Party out, as well as the Republicans, just as we did when former President Trump decided to have dinner with a known Holocaust denier. All of these things are unacceptable, and both parties, both sides, all parties need to come together against it unequivocally, not just in words, but also in action. If President Biden was serious about this issue, he would be working with the Justice Department to implement a plan to really combat this issue, not just in communities, but also on campuses where we have seen repeated attacks that frankly he's done nothing about. Even though there is an executive order on the books to prosecute and to deal with anti-Zionism against Jewish students the same way as anti-Semitism. Yet Trump, I'm sorry, yet Biden hasn't done anything about that yet. And college campuses, I mean, I think we have about 30 seconds left on this. Uh, I mean, college campuses in the U.S., this is a major battleground still for this issue. Absolutely. I mean, I think that this is one of the biggest challenges because on the one hand, you have academics who skew anti-Israel in many cases, and you also have a student body in many extremist groups, such as Students for Justice in Palestine, who are very, very aggressive, even physically, against Jewish students, not Israeli, Jewish students. And then, again, we see that conflation of anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism really manifesting in the exact same ways, and we have to combat it. Brutal and, 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 and you know, long term and deeply damaging, especially to young students who are, you know, even looking at Israel for is this a cause I should support being demonized around the campus? Uh, a lot of issues, a lot of, a lot of layers to it. Emily Schrader, always good to have you with us. Eye opening, concerning, but good to have you with us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.